sometimes it takes a person on the outside to show the person on the inside what they can't see. So I've got to try and bring out the best in you, but in order to bring out the best in you, I've got to highlight the worst in you. And so here we're just trying to be the best us we can be. Are we going to make mistakes? Yes. Are we going to make mistakes? Yes. I'm completely sober right now, and I really need to come into rehab. Well, how many times you rang me? Like right, three times. How old are you? Pardon? How old are you? 27. So what's been happening? I'm fighting for my kids. And I'm not going to get my kids unless I do something about it. So who's got your kids? Their dad. Um, you going to waste my time again or not? No, I'm not. Can I, can I please head up to the to Charlotte house? Um. All of you wouldn't be in here if your heart wasn't filthy or your heart wasn't dirty. Everybody here is struggling with unforgiveness and bitterness. Even now, look, took a half a second, look at her. I said, look at her. How do you feel? That's what you've done to her. She's broken, she's busted. She's screwed up on the inside because of you. Methamphetamines is probably the evilest drug ever to hit this planet. It doesn't just destroy the individual, it wipes out the whole families. It's, it's uh, no discrimination of person, it just, it just decimates people. I'm coming off Xanax and heroin and meth. My brain is craving it, so I was um, seizuring. The rehabilitation centre is only as good as the residents that you have in it. I mean, you can have uh, 20 people in a, in a rehab, two that want to change, 18 that don't, and the 18 that don't kill it for the two that do. And when you take away the coping mechanism, which could be um, the methamphetamines, the heroin, the benzos, the alcohol. Um, when you take away that coping mechanism, what do you do with what's exposed? How much have you been drinking? Um, like a bottle of vodka. Don't blow wind up my back end. I'm going to give you one more chance, and I'm going to tell you to piss off. It comes to the point where you just can't believe one word that an addict says. Um, you've got to think as everything is a lie. And then you derail us, you kick us all in the guts. How we get paid? is when we see a complete, whole, full person. I've dealt with a lot of death and that throughout my life. Led me down a road of, yeah, hard drugs and just could never keep a family. This is one of the hardest things to, I've ever had to do, bro, but every morning I'll wake up and I'll see a photo on my wall and stuff and I know why I'm doing it. Like, this is what it's all about, eh? Um, I see doctors, I see lawyers, I see um, homeless people, I see people from all spectrums of life. When I was asked to take Josh on, I was told that he had served in Afghanistan, that he had PTSD. Trying to go through the world just to keep up an appearance of that you're not miserable and you don't want out. When I was in Geraldton, if you got a call, 11 o'clock at night, you was too scared to answer the phone. Do you think it's going to be Josh shot himself? And so it's undoing all what the drugs have done. Unless they fight to change it in them, their kids are going to have to fight what they don't fight for. As soon as the car stopped, my sons just got out and they just ran straight up to me. Uh, that's the first time I've seen them in four years. They just grabbed me tight and I just burst into tears. Class addiction, five categories, A, B, C, D, E. How you help an A is different than how you help a B. You can't help a C and the D in the way you want to, but you can the way you need to. And E, they're at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. I do whatever it takes to change. So Shalom just looks after these people here.